Welcome to the West Ham Transfer Rumours Show containing one Scotsman and plenty of transfer rumours relating to West Ham United. First up, we've got the breaking news, the breaking rumour that we've got a bid in for Fofana, the St Etienne centre back, and the bid is supposedly £23 million plus £10 million potential add ons. But that £23 million we're looking to pay over six years. To be honest with you, it sounds worse than it is. And that's how it tends to happen with transfers these days. You buy a player on a five-year contract, you tend to pay his transfer fee over that five years. Unless it's Sebastian Allier, we tend not to bother. However, good news, it's kind of related to a transfer. I'm going to include it in the show. Uh, we have paid that second instalment. We were due to pay one in May. And I believe we paid it last month. And we are due to pay one in August. And we've just made the payment for it. So we're up to date with the, the Frankfurt payments, if you like. But if you were seeing Etienne, I wouldn't necessarily be confident of us meeting um, these payments. But this is what we're after. We're after um, Fofana there. I don't know too much about him, in all honesty. I know that him and his partner went to Arsenal last year, got loaned back, held in high regard in French football, 19 years old. He's only played a handful of games, though. He's not played that many. Makes me a little bit wary. But Leicester City are also looking at him, or have bid for him as well. Which, to be honest with you, I am willing to say that anyone that Leicester goes after, going by their recent success in the transfer market, is maybe worth a second look at. What makes me worried is that we're only looking at him because Leicester City are looking at him. He's completely different to James Tarkowski. We're, we know Tarkowski is Moyes' number one target. We know that. I don't understand how you can go from him to Fofana. This would now insinuate, or maybe point towards this being a David... Sullivan purchase. He was on Talk Sport giving it a big how he could bring in these players and that players and stuff, but the manager don't want them. And then suddenly we have seemed to have made some good progress, or at least put a bid in for him, for Fofana, that is. I'm going to suggest that this is maybe a Sullivan purchase should it go through, but keep your eyes on that one because I think there's a lot more to come. Sorry I can't tell you loads about the player, but I just know he's not the same as James Tarkowski. And uh, we've got someone that is similar to him, just not as good. Vestergaard of Southampton. Um, when I say not as good, I mean he's crap, in my opinion. I, I don't like him. I don't like him at all. It's only a little low move we're being linked to him with. Um, and I don't want to see him at West Ham. He's not good enough for Southampton. He's not good enough for West Ham. Um, simple as that. Shall we move on? That's all I've got to say on him, really. Danny Rose, in the last video, said that's someone I'd like us to look at. Well, we're now being linked to him. Um... I appreciate he doesn't like football. He hates football. But I think he's a better left-back option than what we have on our books. I don't think he's a good wing-back as Masuaku. I think Masuaku is a better wing-back than Danny Rose. But as a conventional left-back, I think Danny Rose is better than Masuaku and Aaron Creswell. I really want to see him come here on a, a permanent. He's 30 years old. A one-year loan fee would suit West Ham down to the ground. And to be honest with you, I think it would suit Tottenham at this point. He doesn't even have a squad number. They must be desperate to get him out that door, off their books for the season. I think it's a, I think it's a clever signing for us. If you can get him playing good, and he, he's, he is a good defender. I don't think he's a bad player. He just appears to have a bad attitude because he doesn't like football. Um, Tammy Abraham, right, well, hang on. Today, we're being linked to a lot of Chelsea players, so I've got three written down here. I'm going to go through them. Tammy Abraham's the first one. Well, I do like Tammy, to be honest with you. I think he's a very good striker. Would I like to see my West Ham? Absolutely. Permanent or on a loan fee, I think he'd be a really good option. Do I believe the rumour? No, not really. Um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I think he's talented, but I think it's somewhat stuttered. He's not as good as I thought he was going to be at this point. I'm aware he's had injuries and stuff. But even when I seen him play, he played against Brighton in their opening game of the season. He was poor. He was really bad. Um... I get why we would be interested in him, because we could get that potential. Then we've got a decent player on our hands for potentially cheap. But I don't want to see a loan for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Why well, I'd like to see one for Danny Rose, because of his age. That's why I don't want to see one for Ruben. Because if he does well, his value goes up in Chelsea benefits. We don't benefit, well, we do for a season. But that's it. Um, do I believe this rumour? Kind of. I kind of believe it. I can't see him having much future at Chelsea. He's been left out of the, the last two match day squads, and one of the games was against Barnsley in the um, the Mickey Mouse Cup to Chelsea. While well, I will call it the Carabao Cup as a West Ham fan, because we need that cup. I can see why Chelsea aren't too bothered by it. Saying that, they put an extremely strong, strong team. 
Um, but Ruben Loftus Cheek didn't even make the match day squad, which would insinuate he's leaving Stamford Bridge. And well, that leads us on to Rudiger, another player left out of Frank Lampert's squad, and he's been linked to us as well. I think he'd be a good centre back for West Ham, to be honest with you. I thought he was class at Chelsea, then he sort of, his form nose dived a little bit, and I, I get why he's no longer needed there. They've got Thiago Silva in there, Zuma's looking really good, and um, Christensen's a bit hit and miss. Tomorrow they should be better in the future. Um, they've gone and signed that other centre back that they've loaned out for a season, um, Sar, Sar. Um, so I can see why they're trying to move Rudiger on. I'm not sure he will come to West Ham, though. I don't think... I can't see this move happening. It's Overall, it's concerning the amount of Chelsea players being linked to, because I'm not going to go into it too much, but just to update you with the latest rumours for Declan Rice, it's basically rumours about rumours that Chelsea are now going to move for Declan. They've got Mendy in the goalkeeper. He's signed, he's sealed, he's delivered. That leaves Declan Rice. A lot of the journalists, a lot of people who have had good success rate over the summer in terms of what's going on in the transfer world are suggesting that this is it. And there's even some reports suggesting that Declan's now starting to push for a move. Me personally, my opinion, I don't believe that Declan is. I don't think he will be. But if he got asked by Sullivan or Royce, would you like to go to Chelsea? I would be surprised if he didn't say yes. It depends what you determine is pushing for a move. I wouldn't class that as one. I would class going into Mr. Sullivan's office and saying, let me leave. I think that is what I would say is pushing, and I'm not sure Declan is that kind of guy. However, should a formal bid for Declan arrive, then he'll be tested. We will be tested, and it'll be interesting to see what happens then. And Joe Roden, this Swansea centre-back, we're being linked to him for around about £15 million. Potentially a top, top defender. He's been linked to, even the Manchester clubs have been scouting him. Manchester United were looking at getting him, but were put off with his injury record. He's had some injuries around the ankle area already, which is somewhat of a concern, certainly for Manchester United. They sort of held off with him, didn't go, they didn't make their move. If he gets over those, if, he, if it's, those are proven to be just um, a short-term thing, then you've got a top player in your hands. However, if it proves that he's perhaps going to be an injury-prone player... Then you've got an issue in your hands, haven't you? Um, the, the, the thing is, the, the thing that bothers me is all these rumours are that all the centre backs are completely different. I actually believe that Fofana bid, by the way, I should have said it. I actually believe we have bid for him. I'm not, I don't believe that we're going to be chasing Joe, unfortunately. Um, and then the last guy is Vigani, the Juventus centre back as well. That's somewhat calmed down in the last few days. It was a bit more, a bit more of a hotter rumour earlier on in the week, if you like, but it's. Just done its uh, done its toll really. Anyway, that's all the rumours I've seen. There's quite a few. It's starting to heat up a little bit now. Now that David Sullivan's done his thing on Talksport, transfer window shuts next Monday. There's a little bit of pressure now on West Ham to start getting players in. David Moyes has told the world we've got forty million pounds to spend, so I think it's per perfectly feasible to see arrivals at some point in the next week and a half. Who they are, I don't know, but for Fana, I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of them. Um, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It's here around here, and I should catch you well tonight, tonight, Friday night, we've got the Wolves preview going up, and I should catch you over the weekend, and I shall see you next week with another transfer rumour roundup. See you in a bit.